Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Hey there, folks. Judd Lowe in the Film Talk. How are you? First, a little bit of housekeeping business. You know, in the old days, I would watch every film that came out, every single film. But now, much like Benny in Total Recall, the uh, scurrilous taxi driver, I got five kids to feed. So I can't see everything, which means we can talk about every single film on the Film Talk. And we're playing around with the format, Gareth and I like. Do we just recommend one film a week to watch, what have you? All this is a way of saying I wasn't planning on seeing Joker Part 2, whatever it's called. I just felt a sort of ennui, and ennui came over me. I just didn't want to see it. But then I got a text from Gareth that said, just saw Joker again, and I really think it's a masterpiece and profoundly important. And of course, I take Gareth Higgins seriously. It's one of the reasons we do the show. Helps me grow and learn. And I went on our Facebook page, our Patreon page, and asked folks, should we do an episode uh, on the the Joker, uh, the seconds? And folks uh, said yes. So many thanks for for people's responses there. Appreciate it. So we are going to do Joker, the second part, coming up uh, sometime in the next maybe a week, week and a half or so. Okay, let's talk about today's episode. You know, we reviewed Megalopolis. I loved Coppola's Megalopolis. I'm Megalopolis crazy. Gareth, not so much. Thinks it's narratively incoherent. And the idea I pitched him is like, let's watch it again. I pitched it live on the show. It just came to me. Let's both watch it again and we'll do another Megalopolis episode. We'll see if our minds change. Gareth has not had a chance to see it. Uh, So we're going to save that for a few weeks, maybe when it comes out to one of the streaming platforms. Normally it's kind of negative time, right? So you watch uh, trailers for The Fall Guy with Ryan Gosling for months. And then you find out, oh, actually it's been on uh, Tubi for a year. Not quite sure how that happened. Some sort of time travel. So we'll review it uh, some point again, possibly when it comes out on streaming. But I still am fascinated by Megalopolis. And one of the things that I'm fascinated the most about it is how it's a movie about making movies, about creating. Very much like Tucker Man and His Dream is another great Coppola film. And I got to thinking last night, folks, you know, one of the original ideas Coppola had for Megalopolis is that there would be an AI component, meaning that audience members could interact with Cesar Catalina, the Adam Driver character through AI, they'd ask questions, and then in real time, somehow, an AI version, large language model version of Adam Driver would speak to you. That didn't end up happening. What did happen, there's an interactive element of Megalopolis, which I won't spoil for folks, but it's not AI generated. But I kind of wondered what an AI generated review of Megalopolis would be. So here's what I did. I took our episode, Gareth and and myself, our episode that we did of Megalopolis, I extracted a transcript from that. And there's many different ways to do it. I used Apple, uh, the podcast technology where they automatically generate a transcript. I took that transcript. I converted that to a text file. I took that text file of Gareth and I talking about Megalopolis and I went to an experimental uh, site on Google, one of their experiments called Notebook LM. I inputted that in Notebook LM, basically telling it, use this transcript as the source material for another podcast where they're talking about our podcast. And that's what you're going to listen to right now. You're going to listen to two AI folks talking about what Gareth and I did. Now, I've played this for a couple of people. I did this last night on October 7th. A couple of people I played it for did not realize it was AI generated. This is very, very interesting. I want you out there, dear listener, to listen to this and tell me what you think. Is there any value in this? Is there an active creation here? I had the idea, let's do this. Folks over at Google had an idea, let's make it podcast generator, right? Because, hey, I could read this novel or could I just give the text of the novel to the podcast generator? It'll give me a snappy podcast about it. This kind of goes back to an original idea I had for the Film Talk reboot, in which I pitched to Gareth. Hey, maybe as a bonus for listeners, you pay your five bucks a month, you get an AI version of the Film Talk, right? We input all of the Film Talk into a large language model, and then you could just ask questions of Gareth and myself. At some level, this seems like a parlor trick. When you listen to this episode about to come up, it'll probably seem like a parlor trick. Like it's amusing, just like Chad GPT was at first. It was like, wow, I can create PowerPoints. Makes my job easier. But is it really doing anything? 
it's not quite magic yet. Is it a trick or is it magic? And when you listen to this episode, you'll you'll notice that, oh, this is kind of interesting, but also it gets things wrong. And if you've listened to our Megalopolis episode, you realize it misinterprets at some level what Gareth and I are actually talking about. But I think there is some use yet. There's something there. Will AI have this large language model? Will it have the impact on creation like photography did with paintings? It was fundamentally not destructive, but it fundamentally changed the nature of paintings. After photography happened, after it became commercialized, people asked, well, what's the point of, of landscapes? Why are we doing paintings? And then coming from that, we have this explosion of new types of art. Will the same thing happen with AI? I think it probably will. This is so monumental. It is a trick right now, but it feels so monumental that we're going to get new kinds of art, I think. That's my theory. It's just a trick right now. Not quite magic, but something is happening. On that note, enjoy. It's very short, only seven and a half minutes. Megalopolis 1.5. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the deep dive. So today we're diving into all the hubbub around Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis. We've got a podcast debate, two film critics going at it as our source, and whew, it's a wild one. Yeah, right off the bat, you've got these two totally different takes. One critic, he's called Gareth, he's almost annoyed by how the story plays out. It says visually it's stunning, but he just can't get a grip on the why behind Adam Drawer's whole utopian thing. Huh, that's interesting him pointing out that missing piece. The explanation for the vision makes you wonder, did Coppola do that on purpose? Leave it open. That's what's so cool about these visionary films, right? Like think Jodorowsky, Holy Mountain, that film's bursting with crazy visuals, but the story is more about symbols than a straight plot. Maybe Megalopolis is going for something similar, wants us to feel the impact instead of being told why it's so great. You know, mm. it's like those weird dreams. Logic goes out the window, but you're caught up in the images, the emotions. Could Coppola be aiming for that, like a dreamlike experience? Totally possible. And that brings us to the other critic, Jet. He's got the opposite view. Sees Megalopolis as Coppola pouring his love for film, his own process, right onto the screen. Okay, now that is fascinating. So. Mm. One guy's wrestling with what's not explained, the other's saying that's the whole point. It's about filmmaking itself. I mean, this is why I love multiple perspectives. Exactly. Jed even compares it to that scene in Jurassic Park, you know, where the camera pans over all the merch, the toys, blurring the lines between the movie and, well, the fact that it's a huge franchise. Whoa, never thought of Jurassic Park like that, but you're right. Changes how I see that scene. Spielberg using that trick to remind us, hey, this is all made up, but also pulling us deeper in. And that's what Jed sees Coppola doing, too. He straight up says, we are inside Coppola's megalopolis, meaning the film is Coppola's knowledge, his creative energy. So instead of arguing for or against this utopia, Coppola is saying, come experience how I create. We're in the whirlwind of his filmmaking brain. Yeah. And Jed says it's not just movies either. He sees ancient Rome, architecture, politics, fashion, music like Coppola through every interest he has into this giant cinematic blender. Having a conversation with all his influences, making something new from old, love that. And speaking of influences, Jet brings up how Coppola uses time stopping, a metaphor for editing. Apparently Adam Driver can literally freeze time. No way, that's wild. Like Neo dodging bullets in the matrix, wild. Is Coppola making a point about how filmmakers control time, how we see things? That's how Jet reads it. He was really into this scene, mm. driver in his studio, people pitching ideas. The energy's insane. Compared it to those newspaper montages in Citizen Kane, that same creative frenzy. So we've got this time-stopping thing, almost like Coppola hitting pause on reality to show us the gears turning behind the scenes. Gareth's got his points about the story, but those visuals, man, they're powerful, especially with this whole meta meaning baked in. It's like we're peeking into Coppola's brain, seeing how he takes these crazy pieces and makes them fit. But we got to talk about the actual story too, right? Jed also brought up this whole creation versus destruction thing with Adam Driver and Shield Booth being the opposite. Yeah, to like Coppola sets it up on purpose. Yeah. You've got Driver, the artistic vision guy, then LaBeouf, you know, that LaBeouf energy. He's pure chaos. And Jet called LaBeouf's performance, get this, hysterical. 
Was he being serious? Or is there like a darker, unhinged side to LaBeouf's character? I think it's both, honestly. Jet digs LaBeouf's comedy. He even pointed out a line, did you get a prenup? But he also hints at something off lurking underneath. Like, LaBeouf's character starts out magnetic, powerful, but then maybe goes full paranoid, you know? Now that you mention it, Jet did say something about LaBeouf dropping the phrase, don't tread on me, which is, whoa, talk about extreme. Totally. Right? And he says it as his own people are turning on him. Creepy. It's like Coppola is showing us how ambition can twist, how even a visionary can get lost in their own power. Classic Coppola slipping in that social commentary. But hey, it's not all dark. Jet said there's humor sprinkled into, little jabs here and there. Like, there's this pop star, right? Her career tanks. And later she pops up dressed in black leather. Totally different vibe. Sounds like Coppola's got a lot to say about fame, how it fades, the deals artists make. Jet called those little touches wonderful. Yeah. So they add these layers to the whole world of the film. Little rinks to the audience, like, don't forget to laugh, even when it's about serious stuff. He's juggling these huge ideas, art creation, but then also poking fun at how weird life is, which, now that I say it, that's Coppola's whole career. 100%. And just like those meta moments, he connects Megalopolis to his other films. Jet compares it to how Van Morrison works, how he'll reference his old songs and new stuff. Oh, I get it. So it's not just shout-outs. It's like Coppola's having a conversation with his own past work. Yep. He even name drops Godfather Part 3, says there are parallels between Talia Shire's characters in both. Okay, I need to watch this movie twice, clearly. So much to unpack. What kind of parallels with Talia Shire, though? Jet was kind of vague, but he said both characters have this sharp, savvy side. They know how to play the game, even if it means making tough calls. Jet even compared her to Lady Macbeth, which, knowing Coppola, is totally intentional. No way, that is deep. So it's not just a random reference, he's building on his own themes across different movies. Gotta be a goldmine for Coppola superfans, all the little nods. What about the Godfather the Third dinner scene, though? Spill a tea. Jet was being kind of mysterious there, but he said Megalopolis has this big dinner scene that visually, thematically, it's like an echo of the climax of Godfather Third. Dude, I can only imagine the tension, the drama Coppola could pack into that. Makes me wonder about John Voight. What's his role in all this? He's in the best Andy, worst movie of the year. John Voight's got range, man. Right. Jet actually makes a big deal about this one scene, Voight towards the end. Wouldn't say exactly what happens, but called it, and I quote, novel and very, very special. Ooh, cryptic. Now I gotta know. But pu putting that aside for a sec, sounds like both these guys, even with their disagreements, agree on one thing. Megalopolis is a lot. To say the least. Jet's practically begging people to watch it a bunch of times, says there's layers you'll miss the first go-round, thinks it'll spark arguments for years. Gareth, on the other hand, he was more on the fence, but he did compare it to Inland Empire, that David Lynch film. Wow, bold move. Inland Empire. That's a trip. Surreal, messy, stays with you. Yeah, and Gareth said he felt bored and excited watching Megalopolis, which, knowing him, that's high praise. Like, he respects Coppola trying something wild, even if it doesn't totally work. And I think that's the core of it, right? Megalopolis doesn't spoon feed you. You got to meet Coppola halfway. Wrestle with the ideas yourself. It's like this podcast, different views, no right answer, just what speaks to you. Exactly. This movie, like great art, hits everyone differently. Mm -hmm. Might annoy you, might blow your mind, might leave you with questions, but it'll get under your skin. So what's the takeaway for our listeners? This deep dive shows Megalopolis isn't background noise. It's a movie that wants you to work for it, to embrace the weirdness. No easy answers, just like a good deep dive, right? The more you put in, the more you get out. So go check out Megalopolis. Experience it firsthand. And then come back and tell us, what'd you find in Coppola's City of Dreams?